Hello, this is the notes for section 5.6 for geometry. Uh, this is the end of chapter 5 in which we've been talking about uh, just some different segments inside of triangles. The last section, 5.5, .5, we talked about the triangle inequality theorem and how that kind of regulates what size segments we can have to even form a triangle. This section, we're going to talk about uh, comparing two triangles. So we've got to have certain things in place. Uh, but it's a fairly simple concept. All right, so go ahead, hit pause, copy these notes down. Um, yeah. All right, so what we're talking about here is the hinge theorem. So when you hear that word hinge, uh, you kind of think of, well, at least I do, I think of a doorway. Um, the door hangs on its hinges, and it spins open from those hinges. So that's kind of like an angle. And the door doesn't change its length, either does the door opening. And that's kind of what we have here. So, the hinge theorem says, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle. So basically, we're just comparing two congruent doorways. You know, I'm, I'm looking in the classroom here. It's the doorway into the classroom, and then that doorway into the office. They're the exact same door. The opening is exactly the same. So, the doors are equal. That's one pair of sides of a triangle the doorway openings are congruent sides. So we have two pairs of sides. The hinge of each of those doors, that's the angle measurements. Okay, so what this hinge theorem is saying is, if that hinge, meaning the doorway, if that door is open more than the other doorway, then the third side of it is gonna be longer than the other third side of the triangle. So the door is more open than the other door, okay? It, it just kind of makes sense. It should make sense. So what we're looking at here, this AB, it is a length of three. So is this segment DE here. It is a length of three. So there's one pair of congruent sides. Think of that as the door. All right, BC is six. EF is six. Think of that as the openings for the door. For some reason, the door doesn't go all the way to the other side of the opening, but that's okay. Poor design. So, that means angle B is the hinge. Angle E is the hinge. So, what we're talking about, what this hinge theorem is saying is that if one angle, if that angle in between the congruent sides is greater than the other angle, so this 74.67, it is greater than the angle of 68.4 here. What that's gonna say then is that this side, FD, it's gonna be longer than this side, AC. So the space between the end of the door and the opening is gonna be more than the space on the other triangle. All right, that's the hinge theorem. And if we uh, go the other direction, let's go, let's make this one 84 degrees. So now, this angle is more than this angle. Again, it's the angle between those two pairs of congruent sides. That means this side AC is longer than this side FD, and it is. 6.43 here, 5.96 here. That's the hinge theorem, all right? The converse kind of goes in the other direction. Um, it's saying if you know, you got your two pairs of congruent sides, and if you know one angle is more than the other angle, um, uh, sorry, the other way around. If the third side is longer than the other third side, then the first angle is going to be longer than the second angle, or greater than the second angle. All right, so it's such a simple idea, it's kind of weird to explain it. Um, so let's just look at some examples and try to make sense of it. All right, looking at number three. The question is, uh, wants us to complete each of these statements with a less than, a greater than, or an equal symbol. So, in this one, the question is, AD, is it less than, greater than, or equal to segment CD? All right, so, we have to have, in order for this hinge theorem to work, we have to have two pairs of congruent sides. And we have one pair here. They're, these two triangles are sharing a side. So there's your two pairs of angles. So what we're looking at is the 36 degree angle and the 32 degree angle, the angles in between those two pairs of congruent sides. Obviously, 36 degrees is more than 32 degrees. And so what that means is 
the side across from the larger angle will be longer than the other third side. So that means AD is longer than DC. So our answer is a greater than symbol. So that segment AD is greater than segment CD. All right, that's the hinge theorem. Let's look at question number four. Uh, go ahead and hit pause. Try this one on your own or try all these on your own. But for number four, again, we have one pair of congruent sides. Here is a second pair of congruent sides. Um, we're looking at the angles between them. So 114 degrees, 123 degrees. Obviously 123 degrees is more than 114. And so that means this side, KL, is going to be longer than the other third side, which is MN. All right, so LK or KL is longer. That means MN is less than LK. All right, we're, we're completing these statements with less than, greater than, or equal sign. So here, MN is going to be less than LK. Question number six, that uses the converse of the hinge theorem. But again, same setup. One pair of congruent sides. We got a second pair of congruent sides. Now, the question is asking about the angle measurements. So, side 13, it is across from angle 1. Side 14 is across from angle 2. Obviously, 13 is less than 14, so that means angle 1 is going to be less than angle 2. Question number 7, we have our one pair of sides. We have our second pair of congruent sides, so we're looking at angles 1 and 2. But now, the third side, the side across from these angles, it's a shared side. That means angles 1 and 2, though, that third side, it's equal. And so these two angles are equal. All right. Basically, what we got is congruent triangles. These two triangles are congruent because of side, side, side. And so angles 1 and 2 are corresponding angles, so they're going to be equal to each other. All right. That's the idea of the hinge theorem. This one, uh, these examples, basically the same thing. It just adds a little bit of algebra to it. So the drawings are a little bit more complicated, so let's just take a look at them. Again, we need that correspondence. We need those two congruent sides. Side 12, side 12, there is a shared side here. All right, so we are looking at this angle measurement compared to 66. So 2x plus 5. We're trying to solve for x. The question says, use the hinge theorem or its converse and properties of triangles to write and solve an inequality to describe a restriction on the value of x. So 2x plus 5 is an angle. We're going to compare it to the 66. But the question is, is 66 greater than, is it less than, is it equal to the 2x plus 5? And so what we need to do is look at some of the other information. 13, it is smaller than 15. Those are the, th the third sides of these triangles. Since 13 is smaller than 15, that means the 2x plus 5 angle will be smaller than the 66. Here is our inequality. And so now we can solve for this thing. So 2x is less than we subtract 5. We get 61. Divide by 2, uh, we get 30.5. And so here is our restrictions for the value of x. Okay. Question number 17 here. Uh, again, we're looking for our congruent side. So side 3 is here and here. There's one pair of sides. They're sharing a side. So now we're looking at this angle measurement compared to the 110. Well, we don't really know this angle here on the, towards the top of the picture, but we have the other two angles of that triangle. 27 degrees and 102, that's, you put those together, that's 129, which means this angle here is 51 degrees. All right, so trying to get expressions for x. The 110 degree angle, the third side is this 3x plus 2. The 51 degree angle, its opposite side is the x plus 3. So we're trying to come up with an expression for x. So here we go. But now, are these equal? Are these, is one less than the other? Is one greater than the other one? And that's where these angle measurements come in. Obviously, 110 is more than the 51. So that means the 3x plus 2 side will be longer than the x plus 3 side. And so now we have an inequality where we can solve it. So we're going to subtract x. We're going to subtract 2. x has got to be greater than 1 half. There is our restrictions for x. All right, and that is it for this section. Have a great night.